Hi, I'm Ernie Saro, and today we have a special edition of exercise from the Winthrop Senior Center. However, we're not going to be at the Winthrop Senior Center today. We're going to be at the Gables at Winchester, which is a Sunrise Senior Living Community in Winchester, Massachusetts. They're conducting a health fair called Older and Wiser. A day of health and wellness. Sounds good, right? At this health fair, an associate of mine, Ted Aransky, is going to be presenting senior strength training. We'll get to that in a few moments. However, before our cameras take you to Winchester, I want to stay right here for a minute and talk about some very serious health issues facing us today. One of the biggest problems that we have today is a result of uh, inactivity. In 1996, the Surgeon General re released a report saying that we have a health problem today. People are just not active enough. And this inactivity is leading to all kinds of uh, health issues, diabetes, uh, increase in, in health risks, factors like cholesterol is increasing, um, uh, hypertension, uh, high blood pressure increases with inactivity, a whole host of things, weakness in joints, and in general, a lack of functionality. And the other, and the other thing that inactivity uh, leads to is obesity, and we'll explain that in a few minutes. And the recommendation by the Surgeon General in 1996 is very simple. Every single day, you must try to get 30 minutes of moderate activity. Now, they're being pretty easy here. They're not saying that you need to run three miles or run to the uh, 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 health clubs. But what they're saying is increase your activity. Do some brisk walking. Uh, do some brisk activities around the house. Housework, uh, washing your car, going to the supermarket and shopping, but walking briskly through the, through the aisles. Anything that's going to elevate your heart rate above what it normally goes at. And you sustain that for at least 10 minutes at a time. So in the course of the day, you need, to you need to have this, this moderate activity for, for a total of 30 minutes, but it can be done at 10-minute increments. So a lot of people say, well, I just don't have time to exercise. Well, we're asking you to be active and, at, and, and try to be active in 10-minute increments throughout the day for a total of 30 minutes. That's very modest. What that does is, is keep those uh, health risks at bay. So at least they don't increase from what they are right now. Okay? In order to actually improve on that, then you must do a little bit more robust type of exercise, of, uh, of activity, and uh, probably exercise, like walking at a 15 minute per mile pace, which isn't too bad. You can actually walk four miles in an hour at that pace. So increasing your activity uh, uh, significantly more than just the 30, uh, 30 minutes of mo uh, moderate exercise can actually reverse some of the tendencies. Some people have actually had a reversal on diabetes. Their cholesterol has gone down. Their resting heart rate has gone down, which is very significant. So a lot of the risk factors can actually reverse. Not all uh, people uh, can have reversals on this. There are some people who just have uh, inherit high cholesterol and for those people uh, certain medications uh, uh, are recommended. Now certainly, and, I, and, I, and I, I, I can't state this strong enough, before you start any strenuous type of exercise program or even an exercise program not necessarily strenuous but something that, that above what you normally participated in most of your life, you really should consult your doctor. Most doctors will be 
<laughs> give you a big pat on the back and say go right out there but um, uh, they will also caution you if you already have had uh, heart problems in the past or if you have uh, a certain amount of risk factors certainly if you're if you're morbidly obese uh, they might caution you uh, they might tell you to really go at it much slower initially so check with your doctor uh, later Ted Aransky is going to give us a, uh, a wonderful presentation on, uh, on strength training in seniors uh, but and even in that case uh, you have to check with your doctor before proceeding uh, on any new kind of exercise program. Okay, so enough said with that. But in terms of obesity, what's so sad is that, that the, the youth, so many young people today have, uh, have an overweight problem. And a lot of it's due to inactivity. And a lot of it also, and part of that inactivity stems from them watching a lot of TV. So um, uh, studies have shown that children who watch more TV are more obese. And, uh, and a serious problem uh, can, uh, stems from getting obese at a young age. In your formative years, um, a fat cell, a, a fat is, is a result of each of your fat cells getting larger. It's called hypertrophy. They get larger. Okay. Now, in addition to, to each fat cell getting larger, unfortunately, there's a condition called hyperplasia, in which if those fat cells, if each fat cell stays very large for a long time, the body does a very interesting, has a, a very interesting phenomenon called hyperplasia in which it will actually split the cells and duplicate the cells. So let's say uh, normally a person would have a billion fat cells, it's probably a lot more than that, but let's say a person has a billion fat cells. Um, in a person that's, that's had this hyperplasia, they could have two billion fat cells. So when they overeat or are inactive, now they have two billion fat cells to contend with that each will start getting larger and larger. So later in life when they're trying to lose weight, it's almost like trying to lose weight for two people. It's very, very difficult. So if you know children that are starting to gain weight, at an early age, please, I mean, as if you're a parent or a, or a grandparent, please uh, pay attention to this. Do something about it. Now, the primary thing to do about it is to get people more active. One of the best ways to counteract obesity is to get active. It's the safest way to maintain weight or lose weight. Now, let me explain what that's all about. When, you, um, when you're overweight and, and you want to lose weight, if you go on a crash diet, and crash diets do work in the short run, if you go on a crash diet and you stop eating or hardly eat and you're getting less than 12 or 1400 calories a day, your body in its protective nature, going back to our primitive days, it wants to protect the fat. Believe it or not, when, you, when you're losing, when you're, re, when you're restricting yourself seriously of calories, the body wants to protect the fat. So it actually takes away muscle fiber and even some bone tissue. Some fat is also being lost, but a lot of it is coming from your lean muscle mass. Now your lean muscle mass is responsible for your resting uh, metabolic rate. What that is is when you're at rest, the energy and calories needed to keep your blood circulating, to keep your kidneys functioning, to keep your liver functioning, okay, so your basic bodily functions are 
fed uh, uh, by your calories. And that's called the, 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 that's called the calories burned uh, uh, through resting meta metabolic rate. Now, when your system senses that you're not getting adequate, adequate calories to keep those bodily functions going, it lowers its, its metabolic rate. It actually shuts itself down in order to, to make you survive. Now, if you go through long periods, or even 30 days, 60 days at a time, going on these crash diets, your, body, your body's resting metabolic rate significantly decreases. Now, what that means to you in terms of, of your obesity, when you finally get off your, your, your crash diet and you go back to eating just your normal stuff, okay? Because your body now is functioning at a slower rate, your resting metabolic rate is slower, you're actually burning less calories. Now, how significant is that? Well, I'll tell you how significant that is. 50 to 70% of the calories burned in a day are, are burned when you're not even active when you're sitting down watching TV, when you're sleeping. So normally 50 to 70 percent uh, of calories are burned that way. However, when you've reduced your, your metabolic rate, you're actually losing a lot less calories than you were before you went on this crash diet. So that's why people who go on crash diets, when they finally go back to eating the regular calories that they always ate, they start gaining weight. It's a terrible thing. It's, it's, the, it's called the yo-yo effect, and that's the reason for the yo-yo effect. One of the most important things you can do for yourself is to have a good breakfast. You want a balanced breakfast of fiber and protein and carbohydrates, but you need to have a breakfast because you haven't eaten and for eight hours. If you slept eight hours, you have not eaten. You get up in the morning, your body's looking to replace calories. If you don't give it, in addition, it will slow down. Again, the metabolic rate will slow down through the morning until you finally get that meal in the afternoon. And again, you're, 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 you're knocking down your metabolic rate. That's your biggest friend. So... Um, I'm pleading with you, I guess, if your parents or grandparents, give your children a good example. Talk to your children. Tell them the importance of eating properly, of being active. Show them. Show them that you yourself exercise. Go for walks at night. Be a good example to them. It's the best thing that you can do, that, that you can do for your children. Um, in addition to that, one of the leaders, leading killers, one of the leading uh, most preventable uh, issues uh, we have today is smoking. Smoking is the leading uh, killer of, uh, across all populations today. So please, I know you've heard it many times, but if only for your children, if only for the influence that you have on your children, please stop smoking. Well, enough said uh, on that subject. Now we're going to go to Ted Aransky, who is going to give a presentation on strength training in seniors. And strength training in seniors, as you're going to hear, is hugely significant. If, as we get older, we lose muscle mass, just as a, a normal process of, of getting older. You can slow up that procedure, that process, and that process is called sarcopenia. And sarcopenia means that you lose, you gradually lose muscle mass, and, and actually the quality of that muscle that does remain is not as good as when we're younger. If we exercise, starting at, at about age 30, <clears throat> if we commit, commit ourselves to 
uh, to building our muscle mass. So lifting weights or walking a lot or doing squats and things that build the muscles in your legs and your upper body, we can actually slow up that process. So much so that when you are, for instance, age 90, God bless us if we all should live so long, if you're age 90 and you've exercised basically all your life, you will probably have at least 70% of your muscle mass left, enough to function very well at that age, getting in and out of cars, get up and down off of chairs, playing with the grandchildren, going for walks, enjoying life, okay? If you have not exercised from age 30 to 90, if you have not exercised, you only have, most likely, will only have 30% of your muscle mass left, which means you'll probably uh, need assistance walking, a cane, a walker. You're going to have trouble getting in out of a chair. Now, Ted Aransky and I work for the Hebrew Rehabilitation Center for Aging. We see this condition a lot. And we, but we also, on the good side of this, we've seen this condition reversed, at least slow down and in many cases reverse where people were very dependent on, uh, on assistance for their functionality because of the weight, uh, weight gaining programs or the, 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 the muscle gaining programs that, uh, that these people have been put on, they've actually improved. Even at age 75, you can really in increase your muscle mass and bone density, and that will make you a more functional person. Well, let's, let's move on to Ted Aransky and uh, watch a wonderful presentation on strength training in seniors. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay, I think we're going to get started. Welcome, everybody. Can, can everybody hear me? Yep. Okay, good. Um, my name is Ted Aransky. I uh, was brought here to talk about strength training. And uh, I currently work for the Hebrew Re Rehabilitation Center in Roslindale. Um, I don't actually work in Roslindale. I work in their uh, three independent housing sites for seniors. Uh, in Brookline, Massachusetts. And I'm the fitness and wellness director there. Um, and I also do health education, which is uh, what I'm, what I'm a, a going to attempt to do today. Um, so, of course, the, 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 the topic of today's uh, dis uh, discussion is strength training for seniors, okay? Um, now, does anybody here strength train? Does anybody here know what strength training is? No. Okay, I'm talking to the right crowd. <laughs> I'm in the right place. Um, well, let me, let me step back and before I tell you exactly what strength training is, let me give you a kind of perspective, a little bit of perspective on why strength training is important or why I think it's important. Um, right now we're living in an age uh, where our medical technology, the advances that we've made in the last 50 or 100 years, has been so dramatic that it's actually increasing, it's, it's, it's playing a, a huge role in increasing our life expectancy, okay? We're living a lot longer, okay? Um, which is fantastic. At least, for some of us, we think it's good. For some of us, maybe not, but um, part of what's happening now is that we're living longer, but our quality of life isn't necessarily all that great. So <clears throat> that's where strength training comes in, okay? What happens is, what's happening is, <clears throat> is as a matter of fact, I work, one of my residents, I always think of this, one of the residents that I work with <clears throat> one day told me, you know, she feels like she's a pill person. She's part of the pill people generation, she calls it. 
okay? She doesn't think that she would be alive today if it wasn't for her pills. And that's where the medical advances come in that I'm speaking about. Now the issue with strength training is, strength training is one way of helping to increase your quality of life. And when I say increase your quality of life, I'm talking about avoiding losing your independence or at least delaying losing independence. Because what's happening is people are living longer, but they're becoming more dependent on other people in order to maintain themselves throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout, okay? One big factor in that is losing muscle strength. So when you lose your muscle strength, you lose a lot of different things. You lose a lot. Sometimes it affects um, whether or not people um, can go to the store, walk, walk to, the, to the store down the street, buy some groceries. Sometimes it affects people. They have a hard time getting out of a chair. When it gets really bad, I'm, you know, I'm sure you've all heard or maybe had personal experience at a different point in time, uh, it's difficult to get out of bed it's difficult to simply go to the bathroom. That's what we're trying to avoid with strength training. So strength training is, okay, building and maintaining strength. Okay, so that you can maintain your functionality, your mobility, okay, your activities of daily living, whatever it is that you like to do during the day, whether it's gardening or you know, walking somewhere, going for walks, and enjoying, you know, the beautiful weather uh, and the scenery, things like that. Um, if we can get, if, 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 if I can convince all of you today the importance of strength training and maybe get you started on that, that would be fantastic because ultimately, ultimately, strength training can help increase the quality of your life, okay? So let's talk about how that works a little bit. And we'll also do, we'll, we'll, I'll show you some, some simple exercises you can start with and generally how to do them, okay? Um, strength training. So we're building muscle. The way that you do, and by the way, I'll just keep talking and talking because I love to talk about this. So at any point in time, if you have a question or you don't understand anything that I've said or if you, haven't, if you didn't hear it for some reason, Please raise your hand and or just go right out and blurt out your question. That's fine with me. It, it, it won't, uh, you know, stifle. It won't, it won't disturb my train of thought or anything. Um, okay, strength training, building muscle. How do you build muscle? What's that? It's, you have to use it. That's a good point because the old adage of, Use it or lose it, right? I'm sure you've all probably heard that is absolutely true when it comes to strength training and when it comes to maintaining your muscle strength. So, in order to build muscle, we have to use our muscles in a way that will stimulate them to adapt to whatever that stimulus was. So, when I say a stimulus, I mean a resistance. Gravity, okay, can be a resistance if you're standing up from a chair. Gravity's pulling you down. So the weight of your body can actually be a resistance because your body, if you just let everything go, you're going to fall to the ground, right? But your muscles resist gravity, okay, and that's what, that, they allow you to stand upright, okay? That's a resistance. Uh, a weight, I'm sure you guys have all heard of dumbbells, hand weights, that's a resistance. So you have to use a resistance for whatever muscle it is that you're trying to um, increase strength, okay? You have to use that resistance to, to, on that muscle to increase strength. Now, when you're doing that, it's not, you can't use any old weight. Okay? You have to use something that's at least a little bit challenging for that muscle. 
because you're asking your muscle okay, to get stronger. When you ask your muscle to get stronger, you have to ask it to do something it's not normally, it doesn't normally do or it's not quite capable of doing. And that's how you stimulate your muscle to get stronger. Okay? So, is that, is that clear? Okay. And you can do, okay, you can do six to eight exercises different exercises that will cover pretty much all of the major muscles in your body, okay, your thighs, your calves, your biceps, your shoulders, your back muscles, okay, six to eight exercises that will cover all those muscles, all right, and can make a significant difference in your life, all right. Let me ask you a question, if you don't mind. Does anybody here have any trouble getting up from a chair? How many people have trouble getting up from a chair? A little or a lot? Okay. How many people have absolutely no trouble getting up from a chair? No trouble at all? Anybody? Oh, okay. Okay. All right, so a couple of people. Okay. You all need strength training. It doesn't matter, I don't care if you can get up from a chair easily. Because strength training will help you maintain that ability to get up from a chair. Okay? It'll help you to maintain that ability for as long as possible. Okay? Strength training is not like this, um, it's, it's, it's not going to prevent the inevitable. Okay? All of us inevitably, inevit inevitably will, you know, get to a point, you know, where we're not able to maintain ourselves or, or we'll get to a point where we simply pass and, and that's, that, in, in, that, that it happens to all of us. Um, but strength training can help you to maintain your functionality, your mobility for as long as possible. So that's the idea. Um, so, six to eight exercises. Now, what do, we, what do we use? What do we use to strengthen? Well, like I said, I already said you can use your body weight. You can start a strength training program with body weight exercises. Okay? So, <clears throat> one body weight exercise might be bringing your arms, why don't we do this? Bringing your arms in front and down in front and down, right? And maybe you would do this and down, right? Maybe you would do this eight to 12 times, okay? Now, if by 10 or 11, your shoulders start to feel tired, then you know you're on the right track. Shoulders to feel tired in this exercise. You can, you can relax, okay? Now, if they don't, we need, to, we need alternatives. We need to look for something that will make it a little bit more difficult. And there, you've got a lot of options, all right? I'm gonna show you a few of those. Anybody seen these before? <laughs> Yeah? Okay. Uh, this happens to be Hunt's tomato sauce. You don't necessarily have to have Hunt's tomato sauce, but if you have a can, a couple of cans, okay, of food in your cabinet at home, you can do the same exercise with those cans, okay? But now I've got weight on my hands, and now my shoulders are having to work harder, and I can tell you that the difference between no weight and these cans can be quite large. And I might feel it in my shoulders even more. Okay? One option. Anybody hungry?
Anybody seen these? Okay, there's nothing in here, okay? But, um, and actually these will help me illustrate another, another point I want to make. You can fill these with water and use them for exercise. Now, what if a whole bottle of water is too heavy for you to do this 8 to 12 times? What do I do? Yeah, I take out half the water, right? Now this is, this is, this is great because now we have a weight that's adjustable, okay? And when you strength train, one of the most important principles of strength training is that you do it in a progressive manner. So you start with a weight, maybe in the beginning of your program, you start with a weight that is relatively light, okay? And then over time, you gradually increase that weight. Now with these bottles of water, I have the option of doing that. I can fill it halfway up, do my exercise for a week or so, right? Maybe I'll do it three, two to three times a week, which is a great, um, a, a good number of times to do it, okay? And by the way, in your packets, all this information I'm speaking about is, is written down for you, so you don't worry about remembering all this, okay? But um, two to three times a week, and I might do it mm, two or three sets of eight to 12 repetitions, okay? So I do my, I'm doing it, I've done it for a week, and now it's feeling, all of a sudden I notice it's actually getting easier, okay? I'm yawning towards 11 and 12, right? Okay, now I go to the sink and I fill it all the way to the top. And I do it again and I notice that it's a little more weight. So that's progressive. You want your, your strength training program to be progressive. You can't start with a full bottle of water and do eight to 12 repetitions for the next year and think that you're going to maintain or you think that you're going to gain strength. You, you won't, you won't, okay? So it has to be progressive in nature. Aha, now we're getting fancy. Now we're getting fancy, okay? These are dumbbells or hand weights. Now, did you have to bring the heavy ones? Man, so now we can use these hand weights for that same exercise, okay? The nice thing about hand weights is they come in all different sizes. They come in one pound, two pounds, three pounds, four pounds, okay? You can get them, you know, I, I have a pair of 100 pound dumbbells, which I don't use anymore, but I do have them at home from my younger years uh, when I, of strength training, okay? Um, but you could buy a set of dumbbells. Maybe you buy, uh, you know, a set of twos and fours and sixes. Maybe you have three sets, three pairs. And you can use those on different muscles and use those three to progress with each exercise that you do, okay? And what weight would you suggest? Everybody is different. All right, that's a great question. Great question. Everybody's different, okay? You may be able to start with three pounds on each hand doing this, and I may be able to only do one pound, okay? But what you need to figure out. Okay, and that's why this is such a great question. Why you need to figure you need to figure out what you what you can start with. What I would recommend is start with a lighter weight first, something that you're pretty sure you can do, and then go from there. You know, you can even go to the store if you go to the store if you have somebody bring you some weights or whatever. You know, you can you can say, okay, yeah, this is pretty good, or no, I need a little more, I need a little more than this to start with, and then you can go from there. Generally speaking. In terms of progressing in your weights, like let's say you start with two pounds doing this exercise. If you do it for you know, a week or so, it should feel lighter. It should actually feel lighter, okay? And you'll notice it probably. But even if you don't, try it. Try after a week or so, try another weight. Try a slightly heavier weight. You never want to go from two to five. You don't want to go too much. Just, you know, go slow and progressive.
Okay. Um, hand weights. Any other questions? No. Okay. Sure. Sure. Yep. All right. <laughs> seen these before? Any? Nobody's seen. Okay. This is an exercise band. Okay. This band is creating resistance. Okay. As I pull my arm up, I'm stepping on it right now. Here's another way. Now this is, this is, I like this because you don't have to buy a bunch of dumbbells. You can have one band, right? As long as you know how to use it, which is a whole other issue, okay? If I start here, which is on the end of the band, and I do that exercise, it's going to be easier than if I grab down here. Now it's harder. Okay? It's easy to change the resistance of the exercise with the band. And it doesn't take up much room. And once you get the hang of it, it's fairly easy to manage, fairly easy to use. Okay? So, band. Uh, bands, dumbbells, and the next one I'm going to show you, um, you can get almost any sport shop that you go to. Even Walmart or I don't I don't know if CVS would even would CVS I don't know but so any 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 sports oriented shop. Next one. Anybody seen this? What in the world is this? This is an ankle weight. Okay. This. <clears throat> Because you can't really use hand weights or, or, or soup cans or with your, with your legs, okay? We need something else. So this works great. We can put this on our ankle, right? And then do different exercises, whether we're lifting our knee, pretend this is on my ankle, lifting my knee if I'm standing, holding onto my chair, okay? Or if I'm seated, I can extend my leg out with the, with the weight on my ankle, okay? Great thing to have, great thing to have. In the past, when I haven't had much equipment around, I've even put it around my wrist and used it as a hand weight. Don't tell the manufacturers I said that, okay? Because they have a whole separate line for that, all right? But you can use this also to work your upper body, okay? If you buy, if you purchase something like this, you want to make sure it's adjustable. Why? Why do you want it to be adjustable? See, now I, I get to test you a little bit, because if you don't mind. What? Yeah, there's a lot of weights within here. Okay, this weighs a certain amount. Why would I want it to be adjustable? Huh? Change the weight. I want to be able to change the weight, right, because I want my program to be progressive, and I need to do a weight that's going to be good to start with, and then I'm going to need other weight in order to progress. Okay, so in this type of ankle weight, it opens up. And inside, there's a fortune. No, sorry, there's a, there's a little weight. All right, this probably weighs about a half a pound. Okay, and you've got about 10 of them in here. So this is probably about a five pound weight. Okay, very handy, very handy to have. Um, okay, I'm not going to deal with this right now. All right, so any questions? How do we, so, so <clears throat> in terms of strength training, all right, let me explain to you, okay, I've explained a little bit about the benefits, okay, we, 
I mean, it, does anybody not want to maintain their independence? No? Okay, I, I mean, I'm not, like I said in the beginning, I am so convinced that strength training can be helpful that um, if I can get at least a few of you to try it after today, that would be great. Maybe I'll even get you to try it while, we're, while I'm here. I, would, I do quickly want to do uh, two things, which is, um, one, if you look at your handout, I'm gonna, I just want to quickly go through and see if you have any questions, because I know when I leave, you, you might have a question about just the first page, uh, the first, if you flip over the first page, benefits of strength training. We, we already spoke about some of them. Okay, I just want you to take a look at those so that while I'm here, if you have any questions, you can ask me about it. Okay, so we already spoke about it, it increases muscle strength, okay, but it also increases power, and that's very, very important. Power is a combination of speed and strength. Okay, if you're walking down the hallway, or you're walking on the sidewalk, and your toe gets caught in those little edges, or you know, when the sidewalks are often kind of uneven, okay, like this, oh, the speed with which you can pull your leg forward and step it down is going to be the difference between falling and not falling. So strength training will increase your, uh, str not only your strength, but also your power. Very important in terms of avoiding falls. Increases your muscle mass. Your muscles are the only form Sorry, your muscles are the only place in your body that stores protein. We store fat, we all know that, right? <laughs> okay, there are places in your body that store carbohydrate. Your muscles are the only place that stores protein. Why is that important? Because if and when we get sick, if we fall ill, have a severe illness, often what happens is we lose our appetite. We don't eat as much. We lose weight. The more muscle you have on your body, the more available protein your body's going to have in order to keep yourself, uh, to, to fight the illness and to keep all of your bodily functions, all your metabolic functions in your body going and, and working properly, okay? So, any questions? Just, just yell out if you do. Um, it improve your balance and coordination, also very important in, in avoiding falls, right? Increase your metabolic rate, so you'd be less likely to gain weight. The more muscle you have, the less likely you are to gain weight, okay? Um, if you have diabetes, it can help to control your glucose levels. As a matter of fact, it can ha it, sometimes when people strength train, they can decrease the amount of medication they take for their diabetes because the strength training uh, helps that muscle to be able to absorb the glucose from your bloodstream more easily. Okay? can help a little bit with blood pressure and cholesterol. I'm not going to jump up and down about that because the research findings on that aren't all that significant, but they're significant <coughs> enough to mention to you. Digestion can help with digestion. Okay, low back pain. Anybody here have low back pain? Just one, that's, that's good. Oh, maybe two, oh, three. <laughs> okay. It can help with that. Arthritis. Anybody have arthritis? Well, you guys are really healthy. <laughs> I'm very impressed. Most of the people I work with have arthritis, okay? And a lot of those people say, I can't strength train because, man, my bones hurt. My joints hurt. I don't want to lift weights, you know? Isn't that going to make it worse? Well, actually, it can help decrease the amount of discomfort that you have if you have arthritis, okay? The only thing you gotta remember is if you have arthritis, if you're having a really bad flare-up, 
for some reason, then you don't want to strength train. But if it's average every day, aches and pains that come from arthritis, it can actually help decrease that discomfort. Okay? All right. Let's see. We've talked about reducing stress. It will help to reduce stress. I always feel great after I strength train. It just, I don't know why. It just happens. You know, you get that blood flowing and, uh, you know, you just feel good. Um, depression. There's some research that's been done for people who, who um, have had bouts of depression, um, seniors, okay, which isn't that uncommon, that strength training can actually help that. Now, I don't think it's a direct effect of strength training, just from my own opinion of reading the literature. I think it's a, a, an indirect, because usually when somebody's involved in a strength training program, they're doing it with other people. They have, if they're, if they're uh, lucky enough, they have an instructor, okay, supervising them and instructing them. And oftentimes that interaction, I think, helps. Plus, they're doing something that's good for them. You're, do, you're doing something that's good for yourself. I always feel good about myself when I exercise. Because I know I'm doing a good thing. Yes? We have an exercise program here. Yeah. Three times a week. Yeah. Yep. Not many so what do we do about that? I don't know. Oh, so she was, she was saying, let me just make sure everybody heard. She, you, she was telling me that you have an exercise program here where you, you know, it's a group exercise, meets three times a week, and they use the bands, and then they, they use the hand weights, which is great, right? Um, but not many people come. Okay, so hopefully if some of you here don't go to that class right presently, maybe after this lecture, you will. I hope. That's my hope. Okay? They're doing the game, you know, they're, they're, they're trying, to, you know, I think just by having me here and trying to inform you as to why it's good to do it, they think they're, they're working on that. But spread the word. If you do it and you've had good experiences, spread the word. It's real, not, oh, it's, okay, well, that's something you could, you could certainly, dis, I'm sure you could discuss with them and, okay. It's never going to suit everybody, but I, w I would certainly, uh, you know, I don't, it wouldn't hurt to talk, you know, wouldn't hurt to talk more about that, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, ba 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 okay, that's that. There's an article back there you can read. And we'll leave that there. Um, we're coming to the end. Why don't we do a couple of exercises together? Okay? Now, you don't have weights. You don't have weights, obviously. In the, well, we're a little short of time. But, but what I want to do is I want to teach you some basic exercises. Actually, don't put those away so fast because we might have... Ah, okay. Here we are. We have a few exercises that we can go through together and, and descriptions of how to do them. Don't worry about remembering everything I say today. Here it is right here in black and white, okay? Okay, first, first one. All right, so we're sitting in our chair. Can, can everybody see me? Okay. We're sitting, in our, we're sitting back in our chair. We're sitting up nice and tall. This is an exercise for your shoulders, OK? And pretend you're holding some hand weights. So you're sitting down, OK? Your arms are at your side. Your palms are facing each other. Palms are facing. Slightly bend your arms. And we're going to bring, oh, actually. <laughs> All right, well, bring your arms out to say, watch the person next to you, you don't whack them. All right? Right. And down. It's called a lateral shoulder raise. 
So we're working our deltoids down and up. And what we want to make sure we do with every exercise that we do, we want to do it slow and controlled. What is slow and controlled? We don't want any momentum, all right? No momentum, we want to force our muscle to work two or three seconds up, two or three seconds down. A lot of people, they just focus on up and they go, eh, that's not gonna help you, all right? You want to control the weight the whole time. Up and down, very nice. Let's flip the page. We'll go to, let's do a uh, lower, hold on. Let's flip it twice. Go to the one that says shoulder flexion, knee extension. Okay. So we're sitting back in our chair, nice and tall. Make sure your lower back is supported. Okay. Let's start with, I'm going to do opposite than you, because I'm, I'm facing you, so I'm going to do the opposite. Let's start with our left leg, and I want you to extend it out, point your toe, flex, and bring it down. Out, point, flex, down for two. Out, point, flex, down for three. Out, point, flex, down from four. We're going to do a few more. See if you can figure out what muscles we're working. Out, point, flex, down for five. Out, point, flex, six. We'll do two more. Out, point, flex, seven. Out, point, flex, eight. Where do you feel that? Huh? Right, the thigh. Okay, we're working our thighs. Important muscle to work when you get up, right? It's for when you get up, when you walk upstairs, when you walk up a hill, when you're walking, right? Very important muscle. This exercise that we did, the first one, why is this important? Well, what if you're putting something away? What if you're, you have to reach up with holding onto a can of soup and you want to put it on your shelf, right? Try to do exercises that address the very activities that you might do throughout the course of your day. If you go grocery shopping, if you, okay, if you're holding your bags, maybe you want to do a biceps curl because your biceps often help you hold that bag as you're bringing it home, okay? Or again, putting things away in the cabinet. If you have trouble getting up from a chair, what exercise should you do? Well, why not practice getting out of a chair? Okay, I'm not saying go do that now, but you can do that. As a matter of fact, and if you're concerned about balance, okay, if you're concerned about, if you're concerned about falling when you do that exercise, if you, in your apartment or whatever, you can have another chair, or if you have a walker, you can put it in front of you. Okay, like this, so that when you stand up, you can hold on. Okay, if you have any concerns about that, yeah, that's, that's, that's a fantastic exercise. Fantastic, okay? And what's, your, what's the resistance? Your body weight and gravity. Okay, you're lifting your body weight. All right, have I forgotten anything? Okay. Um, Last page of, oh, the last page of your handout. If you want more information about exercises, good exercises to do, and how to do them, look at the last page. It looks like this. Okay, it says free exercise guide. All you have to do is call them. The number's right there. Look, you get this whole book for free. What do you think about that? Yeah, for free. I got to get one. All right? Free. National Institute of Health. National Institute on Aging. Same organization, huh? 
I don't, I'm sorry, I don't. But all you have to do is call them. The 800 number is right on this sheet. They'll send it out to you, okay? Now, if you want to take it a little further, they have a video. $7, $7 takes you through many different exercises. Not only will they try to help you with your strength, which is really all we've spoken about today, but they'll help you with balance exercises and flexibility exercises. Okay, if we had two more hours, I could speak about balance and flexibility, right? And also maybe aerobic exercise. Strength training is one part of a good exercise program. If you pushed me back up against the wall and said, if I'm gonna do one of them, what should I do? I'd say strength training. That's me, okay? That's me. Um, when it comes to strength training, I would say minimum twice a week. A good strength training program where you'll, where you'll, you'll make progress fairly quickly three times a week. If you have a well-organized program where you do, you know, two or three sets of eight to 12 repetitions, okay, um, of six to eight exercises like I spoke about before, shouldn't take you more than 20 minutes. 20 minutes, 25 max. If you, you know, once you, once you understand how to do the exercises, which takes a little bit of time. Yoga, oh, shoulders. Yeah, shoulder exercises, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this exercise, great exercise for the shoulders. Okay, you do that in your class. I bet you do a lot of good exercises. Yeah. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah! All right. That's music to my ears. Thank you. You made it, you made it work. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh oh, now they're going to hold you to it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anyways, you made my day. Thank you. This is Ernie Sorrow, by the way. He's an associate of mine. <laughs> thank you very much for coming. All right, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you.